totalitarian government. The potential for the disastrous rise of misplaced power exists and will persist. As you connect the dots between different people, organizations, places, religions, history, suddenly the picture starts to form. You don't connect the dots. It's just a mass of what's all this about. The kingdom of God is within man, not one man, nor a group of men, but in all men, in you. You, the people, have the power to make this life free and beautiful, to make this life a wonderful adventure. Someone born in the United States is not more special than someone born in Mexico. Someone who is white is not more special than someone who is black. They're just vehicles for the consciousness to experience. Brutes have risen to power, but they lie. They do not fulfill that promise. They never will. Dictators free themselves, but they enslave the people. War is peace. Freedom is slavery. Ignorance is strength. Welcome to The Secret Teachings. I am your host, DJ Orion, with my co-host, Nick Cariotti. If you have never listened to The Secret Teachings before, open-mindedness is first of all advised. Secondly, we are not a part of any group, label, or fear-mongering, as some of our topics may seem scary, so I advise you not to be afraid, but to be informed as we discuss alternative news, history, philosophy, religion, symbolism, and the secret doctrine. Remember, when someone implies or says that what they say is the absolute truth, it is usually nothing but mere opinion, a perspective on how they view the world, or something they are simply repeating from someone or somewhere else. I am not here to tell you what I say is truth, but merely to present what I have found and allow you to decide for yourself based upon the evidence presented and the dots connected. Information is not negative. It is how you use it that determines the dimensional characteristics of either dual aspect of negativity or positivity. The highest wisdom is silent fact, and that wisdom is not bestowed. It is achieved. It's about time some of you got acquainted with the real hard truth. I'm Ryan Gable, and you're listening to The Secret Teachings. If you're behind on episodes, we have you covered on thesecretteachings.info under the tab entitled Show Archive. Also, we have posted there the few news stories that we will discuss today under the top news tab. As always, with the exception of Tuesday mornings, I am joined by my co-hosts, Nick Cariotti of The Nick Cariotti Show. Nick, how are you? Doing excellent, thank you. And my transient co-host... Mike D. Tay now. The master Mike with the master's degree. One of them, yeah. One of them. Ooh, he's got more than one. Yeah. More well, than usually, one master's you degree. You get that first one before you get your master's. You've got the master's degree, and Nick can appreciate the hell out of the mood light. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Art Thank appreciation. You. That was my first major yep. in college. And I've got the film degree, so I'm appreciating the other documentary we did for the show a long time ago. There you go. A special show for you today on. The dog days of summer, the royal astronomical births, and at 7 a.m. we will be joined by Shirley Andrews, Shirley the author of Atlantis Insights from a Lost Civilization and Lemuria and Atlantis, studying the past to survive the future. That'll be at 7 a.m. this morning. If we have time after, we will also discuss and get into some alternative news, our breaking story of Michael Hastings' car hijacking. We broke this story, and then all of a sudden, the news takes over and says that, yes, you're right, but it was Al-Qaeda. They try to blame it on the terrorists instead. You're listening to The Secret Teachings, 407-646-2915.
That's a track off of the Zero Point album by Katsuk called Illumination. 407-646-2915. You're listening to The Secret Teachings, the Royal Astronomical Alignment coming up, as well as Shirley Andrews, author of Atlantis and Lemuria, on The Secret Teachings, 407-646-2915. Symbolized by some as a king, or King Arthur, it is no coincidence that JFK's murder took place as the sun, an ancient symbol of worship for the masculine energy, was at its brightest and strongest point in the sky. Just as Princess Diana, representing the female energy, was killed at approximately midnight, the point when the moon, an ancient symbol of worship for the female, was at its strongest point in the night sky. These are all alternative facts brought to you by The Secret Teachings. So we've entered into the dog days of summer, called the Heliacal Rising or the Sothic Rising, July 23rd, a high holiday to the occultists. It is a new year in the Egyptian and Sumerian religions, a holy day to the priestly class going back to ancient Egypt and to the land of Mesopotamia, the day when Sirius, the dog star, rises from behind the sun into the constellation Orion the great hunter or Nimrod. On this morning, the eyes of the Sphinx are also aligned with Sirius on the horizon, Horizon or Horus, the sun god savior. Thus, the son of the king is born. The son, Apsu in Sumer, is the father in the representation, and Sirius, the son of the sun, is born. This also signifies the timeline of the elite Bohemian Grove get together in California where the cremation of care ceremony is held every year. The sacrifice of a child on a black stone altar to the god Moloch, the owl, the wise one, Lilith, who was guardian of the underworld along with two owls in some depictions. This year held supposedly on the day of the Zimmerman verdict. Supposedly they held the cremation of care ceremony this year where they sacrificed the child the day that the Zimmerman verdict was handed down. What do you guys think about that? I mean, you think that's coincidence or what? There's a lot of coincidences in what we're going to discuss here in this first hour. What about you, Mike? What do you think? you think that's a coincidence? Uh, it might be, you know. Um, I can't believe they're still doing that with all the coverage it's got. They're still doing their little uh, effigy. It's pretty funny. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it was believed that Sirius, the dog star, was so bright that it actually caused the summertime to be much hotter than normal, and thus we get the dog days of summer. I'm sure you guys have heard of the dog days of summer before. Yeah. Did you have any idea of where that came from, where that phrase came from? Have you heard it before in terms of, like, the history of it? No, I, I always thought it was just, like, because the dogs, like, pant so much and stuff. and they're I've heard that anything. before, right. Yeah. So exactly, that's me too. Yeah. Just, like, hot, you know, hot summer, dog days, long. Okay. Hot as a dog. Hot as a dog. Yeah. That could be a modern day interpretation of what this means. And, you know, a hundred years from now, that might be to most people what it means. Right. But if we go back to ancient Egypt, this is essentially what it means. It tied in with the dog star Sirius and the Sothic rising on July 23rd, which we just had the last couple of days. But we have to understand that this is symbology or an analogy that means more than one thing to more than one group of people. Some believe these stories to be literal, word for word, and some believe them to be a symbolic representation of something more. It's kind of like how the Bible means literal resurrection to some people, and to other people, the Bible is almost like a, a really ancient occult book that talks about resurrections in terms of initiations into mystery schools and things of that sort. Right. Have you heard that before, Mike? 
Uh, actually, doing some research. Yeah, I've heard that Sirius is actually the uh, the real sun, and our sun is more of the sun for the physical world. But for the spiritual world, Sirius is the is the correct sun. Right. And it's supposed to be um, the real sun king, and uh, that's kind of in, in the in the occult world. Right. Yes, because the occultists believe that the physical sun and the physical space that we occupy, they call it the grand illusion. It's not real, exactly. It's not real. And yes, you're right. Sirius is the spiritual sun. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So, like we've covered many times before, guys, whether it's in Egypt or the Mayan culture, they talk about being born again or brought back from the dead. We hear it all of the time in Christianity. You have to be born again, born again Christians, right. which it goes back to this kind of this old occult, if you will, hidden from the general public viewpoint of the world. We usually have three levels of interpretation that I've kind of put together here. There's three levels. One, that's the mass majority of people that believe this stuff to be literal. That when you die, you come back to life physically. Then there's another level. This is like the intellectual class. They kind of support the notion that the ancient cultures are very primitive, didn't understand the world because of the literal interpretations that the mass majority of people have. They're kind of like a barrier, or at least they create a barrier between the masses of society and the modern day priestly class, which would be kind of the third level. These are the people that hold the information to be power. This is the elite class. This would literally be the illuminated ones, the illuminati, if you will. Mm -hmm. Kind of like Christ is anyone who's anointed. So if I anoint you, Mike, or if I anoint you, Nick, you're all of a sudden the Christ, right? Right. So just like that, if I inform you of something you didn't know about before, now you are a part of the Illuminati. You are now illuminated to something you didn't know before. Yeah, exactly. It's not so sinister and dark mm -hmm. once you're able to connect the dots in this manner. It just sounds that way. When people say Illuminati, Illuminati. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, what it's, do you think of when you hear Illuminati? At first, I thought it was more sinister, something much darker. You know what, I th you know what it used to make me think of when I heard it first was the uh, movie with... Uh, um, Eyes Wide Shut. Eyes Wide Shut. With Tom Cruise, the ultimate dark one with the church of Scientology. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Mike? What do you think about when you think about Illuminati? Well, when I first heard Illuminati, I kind of, when I was doing, you know, just the basic research, I thought of Statue of Liberty and the torch mm -hmm. you know, uh, oh. as, a, as a symbol, which it is, which it basically is. Uh, 